Uh, good evening. We are here at the uh, Columbia University um, Economic Forum, and um, we know other, but it's very tough to introduce you. <laughs> this is the original home of New York. <laughs> For that matter, <laughs> uh, you know, we don't carry that off a corner today. <laughs> you know, yeah, people talk. <laughs> no, yeah, well, we don't do yet. Yeah, so, well, you know. to, uh, earlier today there was uh, there was a panel. You were yes. a panelist on the uh, Nollywood. So, give us a take. What was that whole panel about? Well, I mean, I think as, as they built it, it was really about uh, connecting the dots between political, economic, and cultural aspects of the African film industry, uh, with a special view to seeing how you reconnect from the continent to the diaspora. For many years now, since you kind of moved back to Nigeria or mm -hmm. Africa, because you live both in Kenya and uh, Lagos and South Africa, correct? Yes. Well, um, primarily in Lagos, but in yeah, Lagos. I mean, Joburg and Nairobi pretty frequently. In you know, people think about these spaces and think about a lot of challenges. How do you sustain this, you know? Well, I mean, if you look from the narrow prism of, of the film industry, I think the, the really interesting thing that's happened over the last seven years is that, you know, um, Nollywood has essentially taken over the African continent. I mean, I've been to Rwanda, had a governor, gov, uh, you know, a, a government minister say, "Oh, you're from Nigeria. Ah, I love Nollywood. Ah, you Oga. I mean, Nigerian pidgin English has, has and even some words in in Igbo and Yoruba have become lingua franca across the whole of Africa. But I think even more interesting than that is the fact that many of the many of the film industries and the filmmakers in these countries are being inspired by by Nollywood." to go out and do the same thing you know, in, the local, in the local market. So Kenya has Riverwood, Uganda has uh, UG Wood, Ghana has Gollywood, and um, just this week I just learned about uh, Rwanda. Rwanda apparently has Hollywood. You know, so it's a very interesting development across, across the board. I'm a word. We can't, but you know, you keep playing I'm a word. What's going on with I'm a word? Um, I will. I mean, I, I, I sit on the board of the African Film Academy, which uh, run, you know, runs the AMA. Um, I, I think that the, the you know the the AMA team, you know, led by Peace Peace Osigwe, Tony Ani, uh, Sonny McDonald, you know, several you know long-term veterans in the in the industry there, have done a fantastic job of lifting it up. Um, you know, it's it's very people people don't understand sometimes. <laughs> Building things out uh, with consistency to be able to go into the seventh year, the eighth year mm. in Nigeria, in Nigeria or indeed in Africa is not a trivial it's hard. affair. Sitengi, uh, which was running in South Africa with the support of the South African government, shut down. Fispaco, which is run with uh, the support of both the Burkina uh, government and the French mm. government, has you know has has had challenges. Mm. So I think AMA is unique in the sense that it's not a festival. Mm. It's, uh, it's an award show and it really gives, I think, a very unique platform for recognizing the excellence that has been increasing in African film over the last 10 years. So, you come back here as a panelist in this, in, 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 at, at this university, but well, you're actually a student here. Yes, yeah, 16 point. years ago I was here at the Law School and Business School, so uh, for me it's a very personal thing. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the students who have attended have, you know, looking around, trying to figure out career options, trying to figure out how can I go to Africa and make a difference. So, you know, for me it's real. You know, when I came here in 1995, um, Nigeria looked very different, Africa looked very different, but I always knew I wanted to go back. Um, and I think uh, that if there were five, five, ten individuals, former mm. alumni, coming back, telling us what they were doing back then, yeah. I think I would have been able to make the transition a lot earlier than I did now. But you know, um, timing is everything. Okay. You know, uh, I think now there's a critical mass of both students here studying and uh, professionals yeah. who, who are back doing, you know, doing good work on the continent. Uh, I 
I, I noticed yesterday you had discussions with two uh, major TV executives, the likes of uh, Armstrong from BET Absolutely. and uh, uh, Warren from uh, Africa Channel. Yeah, Mark Walton. Ma Mark, sorry, Mark Walton. Yeah. Sorry, Mark, I'm sorry. So, I mean, do you think you guys had some good discourse? Well, I mean, potentials you know, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I first m was introduced to, to Michael Armstrong uh, probably four years ago. Oh. Um, at the Africa, uh, Africa American Institute dinner by uh, one of his colleagues, Tuma Basa, who I'm sure you know, right. from MTV. Right. And at the time, they hadn't launched okay. BET International. Right. Um, so it's good to see that they're doing it, that they're up, they're running. Africa Channel, of course, hadn't come to, to, to pass by then. Mark, um, you know, was doing some excellent work. We've been having conversations over the last two years. Right. And I think it's just, you know, everybody's sorting out, everybody's at a growth phase. Okay. Cinema arts, you know, my project Cinema Arts is at the growth phase. You know, Africa Channel, you know, obviously have been around for a while in this market, but are still looking to grow. I mean, Mark just said, you know, they've gone from 5 million, I think, to 20 million viewers, wow. you know, which is a pretty big accomplishment in this market. Right. And uh, BET International, with the, with, the, with the muscle of Viacom behind them, you know, are, are doing some interesting things in Africa. So for us, it's just really seeing about how do we grow this marketplace? You know, it's not, it's not, it's not so much a competitive uh, thing. It's, it's really looking about new ways of collaborating. You know, I, 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 I will be doing this uh, interview or this favor if I don't talk to you about um, what's, what happened, you know, the, the, the situation that transpired with DSTV in Nigeria. How does that affect your business as far as not all is concerned? Uh, well, well, what aspects of what's transpired with DSTV? I, I heard that the, 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 the uh, people were, how do you call it, they were trying to abandon DSTV for some escalation in prices and stuff like that. People are moving, shifting and stuff like that. I, I'm not so sh I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what's happening, you know, I mean, there are many things, you know, there are many things that happen in the course of business. Okay. Um, so I don't know exactly what's going on with DSTV, but what I can say is that, you know, in, in any given situation, it's never a good thing when you have a monopoly. Yeah. Um, I think that if there's competition that comes in that's com you know that's uh, credible, yeah. uh, it's a good thing not just for the competition, not just for the com com con consumers, no. but even for 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 DSTV itself. Okay. Uh, the things that they could be doing, the, the assets that they could be leveraging better, yeah. uh, things they could be doing different, new markets that they, they could be um, accessing, which I think you know, competition will force them to sort of look more critically, see where they can be more efficient, see where they can add more value. So I just think it's a good thing. Yeah. The more the merrier. Hey man, I know you're very busy, you're always Never on the moon. Busy. Never too busy for yeah. a man like you. <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. A pleasure. Yeah. Not only NYC, it doesn't get any better.